Hi everybody. I am stuck um, in Minnesota. They had a big blizzard up here. I was here visiting Mary Catherine for the weekend. So um, I am giving you a video classroom because we can't really afford to miss another day of class. So if you just follow along, it's going to be just like having me there. I'm gonna, we're going to fill out your study guide. So the first thing you want to do is pull out your study guide. At any time, if you need to pause, just obviously hit pause on this um, recording and write down your answer or do whatever the video instructs you to do. So we're going to see how this is going to work today. So the first thing you need to do is I know that number 34 is not answered yet on your study guide. Why does Jesus knock over all the tables in the temple? And I'm sure you remember that this was a scene that was recreated in Eli. Um, it was a scene where Eli goes in and he <clears throat> um, gets really upset in the gift shop and knocks everything over. So th this is always a passage that involves a lot of speculation and controversy by people because they feel like um, Jesus shouldn't be getting angry. They think anger is a sin, but that's actually not correct. Um, and we know that because he gets really angry at the people in the temple. And so we want to see what makes him angry. Um, it's not a sin to become angry if your anger is justified. If something really bad is happening, it should make you angry. So let's look and see what it is that, um, that really makes Jesus angry enough to start throwing stuff around. The first thing I want you to do is I want you to actually watch a little video clip from a movie called The Gospel of John. Um, this particular movie is just a recreation. They actually use the words from the Gospel of John. Um, so we're going to find it on YouTube. And remember, you're going to have to pause this video and open up YouTube in another window. And so get to YouTube. In the search bar of YouTube, I want you to type in Jesus Cleanses the Temple Gospel of John movie. And when you type that into the search bar, you should find a video that um, looks like this. Okay, I want you to watch that three minute video and then when you get done, uh, come back and we'll talk about what happened in the video. Okay, so go do that now. Okay everybody, so that's a pretty um, surprising video for a lot of people. Jesus looks a little bit crazy. He looks a little bit violent. Um, sometimes it's a little bit over the top because his eyes look so crazy. But we really want to see what's going on. Why does Jesus open up all the cages that the animals are in and let the animals go? Why does he knock over the tables with the money in it? What's going on? Some people think that Jesus might um, be a big animal lover and not like the fact that they're, um, they have animals in cages. And that, that couldn't be less correct. In Jesus' time, um, animal sacrifice was the primary form of worship. So if you had done something wrong, if you had done something what you thought would be wrong in the eyes of God, the belief at the time was that you owed, um, you needed to give something to God that was really, really important to show that you were sorry for your sin. And the, the most important thing was life. So um, in a sense, if you had sinned, the thing that you want to do is offer God your life. But <laughs> that would be pretty crazy because people would be dying all the time because everybody sins. And if we killed ourselves, um, there'd be nobody left on earth. So the deal that um, the Jews made with God was that they would sacrifice animals in their place. So the blood of the animal represented to them um, their own blood. It was their way of saying to God, um, I know that I have sinned and I want to give you something really important. So I'm offering you this life of this animal in exchange for forgiveness of my sins. Whether we agree with that or not, that was the deal that was made. One of the most important aspects of um, temple sacrifice was that the animal needed to be without blemish. It had to be a perfect animal. You wanted to give God the very best animal that you could to show that you were genuinely sorry. And the animals that people used for sacrifice were sold right there on the temple ground. 
So basically, it was like you were coming to church, but you knew that before you went to church, what you needed to do was visit one of the stalls outside of the building and buy an animal that would be appropriate for sacrifice. And, and this was big business. Um, if you had come to the temple at that time, there would be animals bleeding all over the place, kind of like you, you um, saw in the video. Not bleeding, dying, but like, you know, making lots of noise. Uh, but what was happening in Jesus' time was this had become a corrupt practice. So at the beginning, you could go there and bring your hard-earned money and buy yourself a beautiful little sheep or goat or pigeon. Those were some of the most common things um, sacrificed and offer it up. And the people would generally take a lot of pride in the animals they sold because they would have no blemishes. And by no blemish, we mean... Uh, it wouldn't have a mole, or it wouldn't have a birthmark, or it wouldn't have a broken hoof. It wouldn't have a clipped ear. It would be a perfect animal. What started happening was these these businesses became corrupt. So um, a little stall would advertise that they had a perfect lamb or a perfect sheep, but on closer inspection, if you looked really close, you could see that some of the animals were being um being doctored up so they looked like they were perfect when in fact they weren't. So maybe a lamb would have a, a big mole or a big blemish of some kind and they would literally put lamb makeup on it so that you couldn't see it. So what was happening is um, people were buying lambs that had blemishes but they were being charged the price of an unblemished lamb. And here you see a good even a modern day picture of somebody inspecting a lamb for perfection. The reason that this really made Jesus so angry was people were spending their hard-earned money um, and were, were really digging deep in their pockets to try to show how much they loved God, and people were taking advantage of that. So that is, is a, the thing that really made Jesus angry, was that not just that people were being cheated, but that the, the people who were cheating were really using the people's love for God as a way to extort even more money out of them. And that that was really, really a horrible thing. It would be the same way as if someone um, in a position of power in the church today abused um, a family's trust because they the family thought that they were really holy, and, and then instead um, the priest used that against them. So it was sort of using God for material gain or to get what you want. That was making Jesus really angry. So in your answer to number 34 on why did Jesus knock over the temple's uh, tables, you want to write that he was mad because the animal sellers were cheating people out of money uh, and the people that they were cheating were very devoted to God. They were, they were willing to spend a lot of money for the sake of God and they were being exploited by the salespeople. Um, there's also a second reason Jesus was really angry, and that has to do with the money. So people would bring their, their coins, and at that time um, people used shekels to buy things in the community. But you couldn't use shekels to buy an animal. Instead of shekels, you had to use a special currency that was just for the temple. So you'd go to a little exchange booth, kind of like you would today. I have a picture of this in the lower right-hand corner. If you were going to go to Europe, um, in one of the countries in the EU, you would have to exchange your dollars for euros because they don't, they don't take um, dollars in the EU. It was the same way there. They would take their shekels and exchange them um, for temple money. <clears throat> but just like our currency exchanges today, the people who exchange the money would take a portion of the money for themselves as a fee for exchanging your money. And you could have a reasonable fair rate or you could have a really ridiculously high rate. So maybe you would only get 50% of your money exchanged because the fee was so high. And there was really no competition because there were only one or two of these stalls where you could exchange money. So again, the money changers were cheating people who came there with these honest and pure intentions and just wanted to buy something for God, and they were being cheated for that very reason. 
So that's the second reason you want to write on your study guide for number 34. The people who ran the money changing booths were cheating people by taking an exorbitantly high fee to exchange their money so they could buy sacrifices. So those are the two things that Jesus was really angry about. Now the next thing you want to know is why Jesus was making the church officials mad. The reason wasn't only this. Obviously they were pretty mad about him turning over all the temples, uh, sorry, all the tables in the temple. But um, for the three days that Jesus was living at the temple between the time he came into Jerusalem and the time he went on trial, he was also doing a lot of preaching. And he was saying people that was really saying things that were really upsetting the church officials. So I'm going to have you watch another video. Um, again, go to YouTube and search for "Woe to You, Scribes and Pharisees," and you should find this video. I want you to watch about half of it. It's a seven-minute video. This is a speech where Jesus is condemning the practices of the church officials. And the church officials are the guys with the striped towels on their head. They basically are being very hypocritical, which means you act, um, you're complaining about the way other people are acting, but you're doing the same thing yourself. So um, take a listen to this, and you'll get a sense of Jesus' passion, and you'll also get a sense of the frustration of the church officials with Jesus. When you finish watching about half of that video, uh, we're going to go on to the second video in this series of flipped classrooms. I can only put about 10 minutes on each video. So um, this is going to be the end of video number one. You should watch half of the Scribes and Pharisees video and then come back to video number two. Okay, see you in a few minutes. Bye.